Hello students, here is the 11th lecture of our spring semester lecture series, Advanced Materials for Energy and Information Technology. In this lecture, we shall discuss about smart materials in application. Under this topic, we shall discuss about piezoelectric materials, electrostrictive materials, magnetostrictive materials, thermoresponsive materials, electrochromic material, shape memory alloys, and printed electronics. A piezoelectric material is one that possesses the property of converting mechanical energy into electrical energy and vice versa. Naturally occurring piezoelectric materials are quartz crystal, topaz, sugarcane, tendon in the bone, dentine or enamel in the teeth, our DNA, tourmaline, Rochelle's salt, etc. Here in this slide is listed some of the naturally occurring piezoelectric materials and synthetically designed piezoelectric materials. If you have been writing a letter or an essay on your computer with the help of voice recognition software, the microphone you spoke into probably used piezoelectricity to turn the sound energy in your voice into electrical signals that your computer could interpret. If you are a bit of an audiophile and like listening to music on vinyl, your gramophone would have been using piezoelectricity to read the sounds from your LP records. Piezoelectricity literally means pressing electricity. It's much simpler than it sounds. It just means using crystals to convert mechanical energy into electricity or vice versa. Let's take a closer look at how it works and why it's so useful. Normally, the charges in a piezoelectric crystal are exactly balanced, even if they are not symmetrically arranged. The effects of the charges exactly cancel out, leaving no net charge on the crystal faces. More specifically, the electric dipole moments, vector lines separating opposite charges, exactly cancel one another out. If you squeeze the crystal, the massively exaggerated in this picture is shown. You force the charges out of balance. Now, the effects of the charges, their dipole moments, no longer cancel one another out and net positive and negative charges appear on opposite crystal faces. By squeezing the crystal, you have produced a voltage across its opposite faces and that's piezoelectricity. Piezoelectricity is also used much more crudely in spark lighters for gas stoves and barbecues. Press the lighter switch and you will hear a clicking sound and see sparks appear. What you are doing when you press a switch is squeezing a piezoelectric crystal, generating a voltage and making a spark fly across a small gap. The consumer electronics applications use piezoelectricity in one or the another form. Quartz crystals, resonators, as frequency stabilizers for oscillators in all computers use piezoelectricity. Phonograph pickups use piezoelectricity. In a piezoelectric accelerometer, a mass is attached to a spring that is attached to a piezoelectric crystal. When subjected to vibration, the mass compresses and stretches and piezoelectric crystal in iPhone is shown here. 
The other applications which use piezoelectricity have been listed on the right hand side of this slide. These include intruder alarms, medical devices, pin pads, key hopes, alarm clocks, wristwatch alarms, fire alarms, carbon monoxide detectors, exercise equipment, microwave ovens, computer motherboards, ultrasonic insect and rodent rappellers, ultrasonic pet training collars, and so on. Here we see some very commonly used piezoelectric applications. In ultrasound equipment, a piezoelectric transducer converts electrical energy into extremely rapid mechanical vibrations, so fast in fact that it makes sound but one too high pitched for our ears to hear. These ultrasound vibrations can be used for scanning, cleaning and all kinds of other things. A transducer is simply a device that converts small amounts of energy from one kind into another. For example, converting light, sound or mechanical pressure into electrical signals. In a quash clock or watch, a reverse piezoelectric effect is used to keep time very precisely. Electrical energy from the battery is fed into the crystal to make it oscillate thousands of times a second. The watch then uses an electronic circuit to turn that into slower once per second beats that a tiny motor and some precision gears used to drive the second, minute and hour hands around the clock face. In a microphone, we need to convert the sound energy waves of the pressure traveling through the air into electrical energy. And that's something piezoelectric crystals can help us with. Simply stick the vibrating part of the microphone to a crystal and as pressure waves from our voice arrive, they will make the crystal move back and forth generating corresponding electrical signals. The needle in the gramophone, sometimes called a record player, works in the opposite way. As the diamond-tipped needle rides along the spiral grooves in the LP, it bumps up and down. These vibrations push and pull on a lightweight piezoelectric crystal, producing electrical signals that your stereo then converts back into audible sounds. Luminating dance floors are another example. Here pressure creates different light colors. Here in this slide is explained the working of a quash crystal clock. The battery provides current to microchip circuit. In the next step, the microchip circuit makes quash crystal precisely cut and shaped like a tuning fork, oscillate or vibrate for 32,768 times per second. In the next step, the microchip circuit detects the crystal's oscillations and turns them into regular electric pulses, one per second. The electrical pulses drive miniature electric stepping motor. This converts electrical energy into mechanical power. The electric stepping motor turns gears. The gear sweep hands around the clock face to keep time. One of the most attractive applications of piezoelectricity is generation of electrical power on the sidewalks. Charging pads under the crosswalk collect energy from the vibrations. Energy generated by that piezoelectric panels can charge to lithium ion batteries which can be used further. A piezoelectric sensor is a device that uses the piezoelectric effect to measure changes in pressure, acceleration, strain, 
or force by converting them to an electrical charge. To detect sound, for example, piezoelectric microphones and piezoelectric pickups for electrically amplified guitars. Piezoelectric microbalances are used as very sensitive chemical and biological sensors. Piezos are used in electronic drum pads to detect the impact of the drummer's sticks. The crystals laid down under keys of mobile unit and keyboards. For every key pressed, vibrations are created. These vibrations can be used for charging purposes. The different applications of piezoelectronics has been displayed here in this collage. A wider range of applications of piezoelectricity is displayed here. An electrostrictive material has the same properties as piezoelectric material, but the mechanical change is proportional to the square of the electrical field. This characteristic will always produce displacements in the same direction. Electrostriction is a property of all dielectric materials and is caused by a slight displacement of ions in the crystal lattice upon being exposed to an external electrical field. Positive ions will be displaced in the direction of the field, while negative ions will be displaced in the opposite direction. This displacement will accumulate throughout the bulk material and result in an overall strain or elongation in the direction of the field. The thickness will be reduced in the orthogonal directions characterized by portions ratio. All insulating materials consisting of more than one type of atom will be ionic to some extent due to the difference of electronegativity of the atoms and therefore exhibit electrostriction. If a dielectric material is subjected to an electrical field, then it experiences a strain which is proportional to the strength of the electric field. Although all dielectrics exhibit some electrostriction, certain engineered ceramics known as relaxer ferroelectronics have extraordinarily high electrostrictive constants. The most commonly used are lead magnesium niobates, lead magnesium niobate lead titanate, lead lanthanum zirconate titanate. Actuators for small displacements use concepts of electrostriction. Now we shall discuss about magnetostrictive materials. When a magnetostrictive material is subjected to a magnetic field, its volume changes. The volume change can be positive or negative depending on the material. The effect is the same regardless of the polarity of the magnetic field. Magnetostrictive materials exhibit a change in volume 
when subjected to a magnetic field. This is due to a rearrangement of the magnetic domains within the structure of the material under the influence of magnetic field. The volume change can be either an increase or decrease depending on the specific material. Most materials can be magnetized exhibit magnetostrictive effects. The magnetostrictive materials most commonly used in magnetostrictive ultrasonic transducers is nickel or a nickel alloy. In order to produce the magnetic field required to cause the magnetostrictive material to change volume, a coil of wire is placed near or wrapped around a stack of magnetostrictive material comprised of many thin laminations similar to those found in electrical transformers. As electricity flows through the coil of wire, a magnetic field is produced which changes polarity each time the flow of current is reversed. As current flows through the coil of wire, from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, a magnetic field is created. The polarity of the magnetic field changes with the direction of the current flow. One of the smart application of magnetorestrictive materials is magnetorestrictive films in the astronomical X-ray telescopes. The current X-ray telescope Chandra can provide high angular resolution to observe galaxies in the space. The mirrors in the Chandra telescope were formed by polishing and grinding and are thick to obtain their desired shapes. This limits the mirrors collecting area sizes to about 1 square meter due to weight constraints of the launch vehicles into space. In order to enhance the imaging capacities of the next generation of X-ray telescopes, the aim is to increase the area of the mirror without making it too heavy. One option is to make thin mirrors. However, such a thin surface is filmsy and prone to deformation. Our ultimate goal is to be able to properly correct this deformation. So we can construct larger telescope lenses for use in the next generation of X-ray observations. We can correct deformation by coating the non-reflective side of the mirrors with smart materials that respond to various stimuli such as temperature changes, magnetic fields or voltages. This project specifically uses magnetic smart materials or MSMs to try to counteract mirror deformations. We can use a magnetic field to actively control the surface profile of the mirror and consequently improve the quality of the telescope imaging. A magnetic right head will be applied to fine tune the surface profile of the mirror. However, it is not known exactly how magnetic right heads generate magnetic fields and how they would affect the radius of curvature and internal strain of the mirror. In this project, we are designing a magnetic right head. We aim to quantify the magnetic field around the white head and determine how it can be used to deform the sample coated with MSM. The bending of the specimen under the certain magnetic field was measured using a Jigo white light interferometer or WLI. New View TM7300 which has 0.1 nanometer resolution in the Z direction perpendicular to the XY plane, the sample surface and 2.21 micrometer resolution in the lateral direction. The schematic of the rectangular sample with local magnetic field applied is shown in the figure. 
the measurement setup is shown in the figure B. The external magnetic field is produced via a pseudo magnetic right head made up of two permanent magnetic poles, 3.175 mm diameter and 25.40 mm high. The magnet poles can be moved around the glass sample with a 3D computer controlled translational stage. The system allows four degrees of freedom of motion that is up and down, side to side, back and forth, and rotation of the poles about the vertical axis to allow us to change the orientation of the magnetic field in the horizontal plane of the sample. Next in the list is thermoresponsive materials. Thermoresponsive is the ability of a material to change properties in response to changes in temperature. They are useful in thermostats and in parts of automotive and air vehicles. Integrating silicon nanowire array solar cells in thermoresponsive volumers is an attractive example of thermoresponsive materials. Many polymers are known that show UCST or LCST that is upper or lower critical solution temperature behavior in organic solvents. Such materials can embed silicon nanowire array solar cells and impregnate it onto the window material. Solar radiation passes through the nanowire film and thermally activated film alters wire orientation, increasing power efficiency and lower the heat gain. Thermoresponsive polymers find promising areas of application in tissue engineering, liquid chromatography, drug delivery, gene delivery, and bioseparation. These materials alter their shape under the influence of ambient temperatures. These are used in cancer therapy to identify the tumors. Also, these are used in drug delivery and killing of tumors by MNP, that is microgel nanoparticles. The thermoresponsive micelles are also used for sustained drug release in vitro. Next in the list is electrochromic materials. These materials change their optical behavior with application of electrical voltage. Their behavior is basically characterized by the amount of light they allow to pass through them. Here in the picture is shown two materials. The first one is transparent and looks like an ordinary glass. The second one is application of a small voltage which turns it opaque, bluish and dark. The general materials used for electrochromic materials are tungsten oxide, nickel oxide, titanium oxide, polyaniline, polythiophene. The most wide applications are smart glass, light transmissive devices for optical information and storage, rear view mirrors, protective eyewears, etc. Electrochromic materials are ideal for light control applications as skylights, autoglass, sunroofs, aircraft windows and marine windows and potholes. Applications are also in smart windows and mirrors, for example, darkening a window to control the inlet of sunlight, active optical filters, for example, sunglasses, and displays and computer data storage.
Next in the list is shape memory alloys. Hello everyone. Today I'll tell you about one unusual object, the paper clip. This clip is made from a very unusual material, nitinol. Nitinol is an alloy of nickel and titanium in proportions of 45% titanium and 55% nickel. This alloy has a unique property that was discovered in 1961 by American scientists. The property of this alloy is called shape memory. <clears throat> so, to demonstrate this property, let's conduct an experiment. Take a clip of nitinol and deform it. Besides the clip, I as well have a spring made of nitinol, which I also deform into a random shape. The activation temperature of nitinol is about 40 degrees Celsius. I have turned on the burner on the stove and put the deformed nitinol clip on its surface. Over time, while heated, the clip begins to return to its original shape. The same thing happens with the spring. This happens because when the temperature changes, the crystal lattice configuration of nitinol changes from one phase to another. Also, nitinol is 10 times more elastic than other metals. While nitinol restores the shape, it can also do some work. Let's see what kind of work a small spring of nitinol can make. I have attached the spring to a tripod and hung a porcelain basket onto it, which weighs 180 grams. Next, we stretch the spring. For the spring to be tightened again, I'll heat it with a lighter. Let's proceed. As you can see, the spring has left the basket quite easily. Now, we'll complicate the task. I'm adding metal beers into the basket and the total weight now becomes 278 grams. Testing the spring. As you can see the spring can easily handle that task. Adding more weight. I now put the stone and a piece of pyrite into the basket. Total weight is now 414 grams. And as you can see nothing can stop the power of our spring. In order to ensure how big is the power that nitinol creates when restoring the foam, I hung a YouTube silver button on a spring, which weighs about 1 kilogram. Trying again with heating the nitinol. And what we see is even this huge weight can be risen by the spring very easily. However, we could now probably ask, if it's such an amazing alloy, why don't we use it in our everyday life. The main drawback of nitinol is its high price and the complexity of manufacturing and welding. In the 17th, experiments were carried in the United States on engine models based on nitinol and its properties. However, it hasn't gone further than the prototype stage. The statement of US leadership of disadvantages of the project became the reasoning to reject this idea. Today, nitinol is mainly used in medicine for bone bonding. Who knows, maybe in the future when the oil runs out, humanity will revert to the nitinol engines. shown how the shape memory alloys works. The shape memory effect occurs due to the change in the crystalline structure of materials. The two important phases in these materials are martensite, which is a low temperature phase and relatively weak, and austenite, 
which is high temperature phase and relatively strong. The world's first electrical current actuator shape memory alloy wire Furukawa NTH7 TTR was utilized as a lock switch actuator on cameras with a safety feature that ensures the rear cover does not open until the film is rebound upon completion of photography. This was world's smallest, lightest, body size autofocus single lens reflex camera. A shape memory spring opens and closes the solar cells that are mounted on the ends of solar batteries. This adjusts a satellite's position to the solar wind and controls the overall attitude of the satellite. Here in this picture is shown the opening of the solar panel in the space. Here is shown a portable kitchen made of shape memory alloys. The shape memory alloys can be converted into a container-like structure and after use can be folded back and stored in a cupboard. The next topic in the list is printed electronics. The organic and printed electronics is a set of printing methods used to create electrical devices on various substrates. Printing typically uses common printing equipment suitable for defining patterns on the materials such as screen printing, flexography, gravure, offset lithography and inkjet. By electronic industry standards, these are low-cost processes. Electrically functional electronic or optical inks are deposited on the substrate, creating active or passive devices such as thin film transistors, capacitors, coils, resistors, etc. Printed electronics is expected to facilitate widespread very low cost, low performance electronics for applications such as flexible displays, smart labels, decorative and animated posters and active clothing that do not require high performance. The printed electronics term is often related to organic electronics or plastic electronics in which one or more inks are composed of carbon based compounds. These other terms refer to the ink material which can be deposited by solution based, vacuum based or other processes. Printed electronics in contrast specifies the processes and subject to the specific requirements of the printing process selected can utilize any solution based material. These include organic semiconductors, inorganic semiconductors, metallic conductors, nanoparticles and nanotubes. For the preparation of printed electronics, nearly all industrial printing methods are employed. Similar to conventional printing, printed electronics applies ink layers on a top another. So, the coherent development of printing methods and ink materials are the field's essential tasks. The most important benefit of printing is low cost volume fabrication. The lower cost enables use in more applications. An example is RFID systems which enable contactless identification in trade and transportation. In some domains such as light emitting diodes, printing does not impact performance. Printing on flexible substrates allows electronics to be placed on curved surfaces. For example, printing solar cells on vehicle roofs. More typically, 
conventional semiconductors justify their much higher cost by providing much higher performances. The commonly employed inks for printing applications can be found in the link given below. And the common substrates on which these inks are utilized for printing are fluorine doped tin oxide or FTO glasses, gold coated substrates, indium tin oxide or ITO coated substrates, silicon wafers and single crystal substrates. There are two main classes of organic light emitting diodes. OLED or organic small molecule based light emitting diodes and PLED that is polymer light emitting diodes. A typical double heterostructure small molecule OLED consists of three organic layers sandwiched between the electrodes. The organic layers adjacent to the cathode and anode are the electron transport layer and the hole transport layer respectively. Emissive layer usually consists of light emitting dyes or dopants dispersed in a suitable host material often same as HTL or ETL material. PLED have relatively simple architecture with the light emitting polymers or LEP layer combining host, emitter and charge transport functions in a single solution process layer of the device. Here is shown schematic of a double heterostructure OLED consisting of a whole transport layer HTL, electron transport layer ETL, emissive layer EML and the electrodes. The another picture is the schematic illustration of a polymer light emitting diode PLED. The HIL is whole injection layer, usually a spin cast film of an inherently conductive polymer. A roadmap for organic and printed electronic application emerging from today evolutioning to the future is shown here. These are organic photovoltaics, flexible displays, OLED lighting, electronics and components, integrated smart systems. Flexible electronics are also known as flex circuits is a technology for assembling electronic circuits by mounting electronic devices on flexible plastic substrate such as polymide, peak or transparent conductive polyester film. Here is shown an application which comes under this category that is electronic skin which can monitor heart functioning. An ultra thin electronic device that attaches to the skin like a stick on tattoo and can measure electrical activity of the heart, brain waves and other vital signs without the bulky electrodes used in current monitoring. An advanced version of flexible electronics is transient electronics, which is biocompatible and these kinds of electronic devices can dissolve in body environment. The new biocompatible electronic devices encapsulated in silk can dissolve harmlessly into their surrounding after a precise amount of time. These transient electronics promise medical implants that never need surgical removal as well as environmental monitors and consumer electronics that can become compost rather than trash. Here a biodegradable integrated circuits including transistors, diodes, inductors and capacitors is partially dissolved by a droplet of water. The image is curtsy of Tuck University and the University of Illinois.
another application is printing quantum dot displays and electronics. A new printer uses electrical fields to print quantum dots at high resolution for light emitting diodes. With a new printing method, researchers created high resolution patterns shown in the left hand side of the picture and shapes in the right hand side of the picture of red and green quantum dots shown in these fluorescent images. Print lines on an average about 500 nanometer wide whereas it's hard to get droplets is smaller than about 25 micrometer by conventional means. Nevertheless, the electronics made our lives more easier, faster and far more convenient. However, the toxins found in the electronics are of huge concern. We could not take up this topic in this semester, but in the next semester we shall show, discuss about it. The main toxins found in electronics are lead, mercury, cadmium, plastics, barium, beryllium, brominated flame retardant, hexavalent chromium, radioactive materials and so on. This brings us to conclude our lecture 11. Thank you.